Hello everybody, welcome to another installment of the OPW University videos. My name is Dan Boyle, I'm the Sales Support Specialist at OPW, and today we're standing inside the Retail Fueling Manufacturing Plant in Smithfield, North Carolina. Today we're going to be talking about coupling pipes, so we're going to make sure that our FlexWorks pipe and our DPCs are getting a good mechanically fastened swedge every time. So in addition to the actual pipe, pipe coupling process, um, I'm going to introduce you to the CME-0110. Um, we'll talk about all of the features and pieces of that machine, as well as some best practices and some recommendations when swedging 2-inch pipe and 3-inch pipe. So with that, let's get started. So before we get started, I would just like to have a little note here about safety. You can see I am going to be wearing some nitro gloves along with the eye protection. Anytime, we want to use, anytime we're using those petroleum-based lubricants or anything like that, I want to protect the hands and anytime we're using any kind of machinery, protect the eyes. Um, you might have more safety that you might actually need to do out there in the field in an open pit uh, with high visibility, high visibility vests. And you also want to always make sure that you're satisfying your safety manager, OSHA, or whatever local authority having jurisdiction is covering that area. So with that, let's get into the actual swedge machine. As I mentioned, we're going to be working today with the CME-0110. Um, this version comes in black, but you're also going to see these out there in green. Um, both of these versions are going to work great. In fact, if ever one of them doesn't, we also repair them. So contact the DM in your area and get that shit back to us and we'll repair it, have it working like new. So as we get started, I just want to talk about a couple of the features of this CME-0110. And it should be noted, this is not the only swedge machine that we offer. In fact, if you are going to be using a lot of 3-inch for, say, a high-flow loop site, um, I do recommend that you check out the remote swedge machine, which actually has the cylinder on the outside so that you can change the angle of the, of the swedge being pulled through instead of the angle of the pipe. So first we'll look at the components in the CSK kits. These are actually going to be the swedge block kits that you order that go with the swedge machine. In this kit you're going to have the actual swedge block itself. This is the mandrel that's going to be pulled through the fitting. Um, and it's very important to note before you swedge to look at the top of this. The version I have here says OPW Flexworks 1.0. There's also for the 2 inch would be Flex Works 2.0 or Flexworks 3.0 for those different sizes of pipe. There is also a 2R that we do allow um, for this current revision of system. If you look at your swedge block and it says H1 or it has an H1 part number anywhere on it, we want you to set that to the side or maybe even just discard it completely. That is for the Pisces system which is no longer being sold. Along with that swedge block will be your face plate that comes with its little thumb screw and that will attach to the swedge machine. You'll also have your threaded rod. There is an up, down, and off switch right here on the front of, of the swedge machine. And then there's also this little brass vent. Before you get started, you're going to want to unthread that brass vent, which has a dipstick attached to it. You want to pull that out and make sure that there's just a little bit of lubrication on the end of it. Our swedge machines require Dextron, um, which you can pick up at any uh, auto parts store. And you just want to make sure that it is being filled with transmission fluid. Once you check it and you see that it's lubricated, you just want to sit that dipstick back in there and leave that vent open. That vent will stay open for the remainder of the process. So first, we've got to get our swedge machine ready to accept the DPC in the pipe. So we're going to take our face plate, and we're going to put that right over the hydraulic cylinder. And we're going to tighten this little thumb screw to make sure that this doesn't move and then we will take our threaded shaft and you're going to want to screw that down into the cylinder. Once it starts to get tight, I like to take a little wrench and I do like to just snug that down a little bit. We want to make sure that we're getting total thread engagement on that threaded rod because we're going to need all of the depth to make sure that it pulls all the way through that fitting. And now as we get started, we want to make sure that our pipe is in a position for us to swedge it. And that means making sure that we have a clean, flat cut on the side that we're going to put that DPC on. Now, it's not required that you use a cutter from OPW, but we do require that whatever cutter you use is a smooth PVC style blade so that we can get a good, clean cut. Um, we do not allow 
hack saws or reciprocating blades because they create very small filaments and those small filaments might get stuck in that very small interstice of our pipe. So now we're ready to grab our DPC-2150A. That is our double wall pipe coupling. It is made of, completely made of stainless steel. Um, it's got a permanent interstitial test port in there so that um, you can immediately and quickly test your pipe without needing any kind of rubber boots or anything like that. And when you pull it out of the bag, you're going to see that it comes with this orange thread protector on it. And just underneath that orange thread protector is where we have our gasket here. Now these are a flat threaded nut with a gasket seal. Um, so we're going to take this gasket out just to make sure that there's no chance that we hurt that during any part of this swedge process. Um, so once you take those two pieces out, Go ahead and find a safe place for those. I like to just put them in my pocket so that I know exactly where they are and then when I'm done swedging that I can remember to put those back. Now when you look at a DPC, this is what it looks like on the inside. You have this larger circle around the outside and then a smaller circle on the inside. And between those two circles, we have the area where, where our pipe will live. Now when the swedge block pulls through, it's going to expand the metal on that small circle so that it pinches the pipe into the barbs and the outside wall. Now, we need to grease this so we can pull a metal mandrel through it. It's very important that whenever you put any lubrication, we like to use um, black molly coat, white lithium, or assembly paste. All of those will work well. You can either use a, a small soldering brush or your finger. I know there's some guys out there like to keep their hands clean on jobs if they can, so those small soldering brushes, I will say, they, they come in pretty handy. Um, but you always want to install your lubrication on the inner part of the innermost circle. That is the part where the mandrel comes through. We don't ever want to put our lubrication on the actual mandrel itself because as it pulls inside of here, that grease or, or white lithium will roll the corners and it will end up in that place where our pipe lives. So whenever you're, make, whenever you're greasing this up, just remember the innermost piece, we just want to get a good decent coat in there. Don't need to go crazy, but we just want to make sure that mandrel pulls through easily. So with that, I'll put a little bit of uh, white lithium here, right on the innermost piece. And then I like to pay attention with where I'm putting that interstitial test port. So now we've got our DPC ready to go, ready to be swedged. Once we've got our DPC in place, next thing we need to do is get our swedge block. We're gonna thread that down onto our threaded rod all the way down until we're making good contact. Hold that down. And like I said, we're trying to get the most depth we can. So we wanna tighten that down good and tight. And that allows us to have our DPC and our swedge block ready. So the next thing we need to do is we need to prep our pipe. Now for inch and a half and two inch pipe, this measurement is gonna be one and one eighth inch. For three inch pipe, it's gonna be closer to one and three eighths inch. So we're gonna take that one and one eighth inch, one and one eighths inch measurement, and we're gonna, from our flat, clean cut that we got from our smooth sided blade, and we are going to make a little mark right there at an inch and an eighth. Now what this does for us is it allows you as the installer doing the swedge coupling to go ahead and put that piece in and to make sure you have a visual line to check that you have engaged all of the barbs and that the pipe is as down as far into that DPC as it needs to be. Also, in the event that something happens out there later in the field and you might have a leak from somewhere on your swedge, um, this will allow somebody, an OPW representative, to come out and to have a really fast visual indicator to make sure that the pipe was swedged properly. Otherwise, we may have to take that pipe out, cut the fittings off, and figure out what, what had gone wrong during that installation. So, once we've got our line drawn to one and one eighth inch, one thing I like to do whenever I'm putting my pipe into my coupling is I always like to line up my permanent interstitial test port with the UL writing and date code on the pipe. And one thing this does for you is later on in the job, whenever you go to connect those TCT or TTT jumpers, those test tubes, um, this way by taking a look at the pipe, you can, you can readily know where those access ports are so you're not having to search all over the coupling for them. So 
If you can see here, I just see my line right at the top of that ferrule, just at the exact same spot as the other. So I know I've got, I've got it all the way in. I've got my swedge block on. I've got my DPC greased. And now all I need to do is turn on the swedge machine and it's gonna pull that mandrel down and it's gonna expand the inside of that DPC. Now, this machine's gonna make some noise. Um, sometimes there's some squeaking in the cold, that's very normal. We have found that uh, black molly coat does work best in cold applications. And then once that mandrel is complete, you're gonna feel the pipe kind of get loose in the, uh, and the ferrule and everything will kind of loosen up and you'll see what that means. But that means that the swedge has been completed. You can turn the machine off and you have a complete, a good swedge. Now once that process is complete, you can see that I get a little bit of movement coming from there. We just want to pull that off, give the nut a spin, make sure that it still spins. I've never actually had one not spin, but I would imagine that you want to go ahead and know that if there were, some, if there were an issue before you get it into the trench. Once you've got your swedge fitting and checked, you're going to want to reach back into your pocket and grab those two really important pieces. As I said, since we have, a, since we have straight threads on this nut, it will not seal without our gasket. Um, it's also important to note that the T's and elbows that this will seal to um, are also NSPH fittings. Those can be purchased from OPW as well. Once we got our gasket in, we want to put our thread protector back on. Now this is going to do two things for us. One, it's going to protect our threads um, through the rest of this process from, from here over to the trench. But maybe just as importantly, it's going to keep all of the dirt and pea gravel and dust and debris out of that product line when we're moving it from this side of the job site to where that pipe is going to permanently live. And that's all there is to it. So using this process, we're able to combine two fantastic technologies. The long continuous piping lengths with no buried joints from Flexworks, along with our stainless steel um, double wall construction DPC that has the built-in permanent interstitial, interstitial test ports that gets rid of those old uh, test rubber boots. This is a fast and reliable way to put a fast and reliable system in the ground. Um, the DPC is not the only fitting that we offer for Flexworks. We do also offer the barbed uh, clamshell version, um, which is the SBC. And for more information on that fitting, you can go over to OPW University videos to check out yours truly, uh, giving you more information on those. So if you have any further questions or any uh, additional information is needed, please reach out to the DM in your area or go to opwglobal.com. Thanks for your time.